yes, welcome everyone to GeoHug. So before we kick off today's session, I just want to take this time to acknowledge the traditional lands which we're all coming from today. I'm here on the beautiful lands of the Gadigal of the people of the Aurora Nation, and I'd like to pay my respects to the elders past, present and future. So I'm really looking forward to the discussions that we have for today's panel session about widening the geoscience catchment net. We have a wonderful bunch of speakers for you today with our diverse range of experiences and perspectives. And they'll be sharing their insights on how we can attract more people into the geosciences. So we'll be starting with a focus on schools with Phil Gilmore and Joe Watkins and universities with Richard Lilly, into early career with Holly Cook and industry perspectives from Ned Howard. And this was all inspired by Mark Arundel's recent viral LinkedIn post. So a huge thank you to Mark for the assistance in putting these panel sessions together. He's turning into quite the content creator. And a massive thank you to the wonderful rock stars that we have chatting to us today. I'm so appreciative that all of you have joined us. So to kick it off, we'll be handing over the mic to Phil Gilmore, who's a regional coordinator with the Teacher Earth Science Education Program, or TSEP. And yes, over to you, Phil. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Jess. Thanks for the invite and thanks, Mark. Great, great initiative. Um, yeah, so look, I am a Geoscience has got about 25 years experience, um, exploration mining, geospatial in industry, government outreach, and also in geotourism. Um, I'm talking with my TSEP hat on today, which is the Teacher Earth Science Education Program. Um, also sort of been around the geoscience education um, sector with the Geological Society of Australia, just in terms of being governing councillor and being involved with those for a while as well. So TSEP, just a really quick snapshot. Um, I think the slide packs are gonna be shared, but it's a not-for-profit organisation that works with the Australian Science Teacher Association. And we have a team of geoscience professionals that do teaching and outreach experience. We're really looking at addressing the curriculum to help teachers teach the uh, earth and space sciences curriculum and that's something that changes quite regularly and it's something we should be a little bit concerned of um, there's some things in there we, we we're probably not aware of as an industry there's some things um, that should be in there in as far as our sector goes and that's probably something we'll talk about we, we run professional development workshops for teachers we, we run webinars um, we do field trips classroom inclusions um, and usually try and focus on local geology and landscape stories and increasingly with the curriculum, we also look at Australia's first year scientists, which were um, the Wabakal and Torres Strait Islander people. And there's a really, really rich history there of uh, stories about navigation and um, myths with the stars and the planets, but also with the use of resources, of course. So that's something that we should mention when we talk, of, when we do our acknowledgement of country that, um, yeah, they were our, Australia's first year scientists. So look, we've got a multiplier effect. We teach teachers, um, we do the incursions. Those teachers then teach their students um, and so on. So I think over the 17 years or so, we, we TSEP, we've had about 5,000 teachers. So that sort of equates to about 1.4, 1.5 million students who are being impacted by that, which is, which is fantastic. We uh, run a series of, of, of um, workshops, as you can see, see there. But I might just get you to flick onto the next slide, please, Holly. Thank you. So Mark asked us to sort of have a look at some of the challenges and what we could do better and some ideas. So that's how I've broken that down. But I think, you know, we'd all probably agree with the big issues I've got in the top left there that there's this real disconnect with the general public and geoscience and, and, and how it underpins our life. There's also this perception that geoscience equals mining. And I think one of the issues we have in the sector is nobody really has ownership of this issue. It's not really a government thing. Companies don't have the time or the remit. The peak bodies um, do bits and pieces, but there's no sort of one voice that has ownership of geoscience education in, in Australia, as far as I'm aware. And then, as I mentioned, the curriculum's a little bit light on things that we actually need for um, our geosciences of now and the future. So in terms of the students being engaged, a, a lot of uh, students don't actually realise geoscience is about understanding the, the earth and the earth systems. They think it's just about mining. They certainly don't know about the diversity of geoscience and the career opportunities that you can have. And we tend to, as an industry or as a sector, talk about rocks and minerals and fossils because that's what we really love. 
But actually, geoscience needs chemists, it needs physicists, it needs mathematicians, biologists, it needs these people who can communicate in terms of land access and markets and things like that. And these really aren't promoted. And I sort of becoming increasingly aware that a lot of teachers in high schools who have science backgrounds, typically chemistry or biology, aren't really aware that chemistry um, skills are really, really needed in geoscience. So what we could do better, I think the messaging is there. The younger generations want to have a job that makes a difference. So the hooks here are that we are in this middle, the middle of this big energy transition. So young people can make a difference in geoscience by helping us tran trans transition from renewable, oh, sorry, to renewable energies and also things like hazard risk mitigation. We've also got an issue that we do things really, really well, like TSEP and, and OZFED and, and Next, Nexus, and also lots of other short courses that have happened in the past, but they're not always funded for the long term and they're not funded that well. So I've got a few ideas there. I think we need a roadmap from school to uni to workforce, how you can plot a career. We need some coordinated uh, messaging and I'd, I'd like to see more vocational training and short courses aimed at, at uh, students. And I'll just finish with the next slide because I'm sure we can come back to these. Just say, so I found this from the, um, the American Geosciences Institute. They've put to put together a really glossy brochure about why I do geoscience, but it really nails those hooks of, you can make a difference if you're a geoscientist to the planet that we live in. And here's some, some of the things you can do with that career. That's my five minutes, I think, Jess, so thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much. There's some really good points and yeah I really appreciate you taking the time to explain that so thank you and now we're handing over to Joe Watkins uh, the CEO of Australian Earth Science Education or Oz Earth Ed so thank you Joe. oh thank you and thank you Holly um, so I guess I come at this from a little bit of a different perspective personally so I'm actually originally a teacher with a biology and environmental science background so I probably represent a large number of teachers that are teaching year 11 and 12 earth and environmental science and sort of thrust into the geology side of things without a lot of background in it originally um, yeah luckily completely fell in love with it like many teachers do when they start teaching so year 11 and 12 um, earth and environmental science is a subject that is offered in a number of schools across Australia not enough but that's another conversation about squeezing lots of subjects into year 11 and 12 and supporting schools and um, what can be done uh, but yeah incredibly lucky to work, move across and work with what was called Earth Science Western Australia and then over the last couple of years we've grown our support um, into other areas so um, that's led us to have the more holistic Australian name um, and yeah, we've been sort of working very intensively with schools since 2005-06 in WA and then in New South Wales uh, for the last sort of three years, uh, Northern Territory in the primary space and a little bit of work starting in South Australia as well. Um, so I guess I come at it from a teacher background, but I am a later, I, I did end up um, getting my geology degree as well. I couldn't help myself. I had to stack it on. Um, and I, again, am like a lot of teachers that have fallen in love with it teaching and then built sort of stacked on skills and built on as we went. So I think sometimes the conversation about, you know, lots of teachers come in without a big earth science background well, we're a product of the generation of schooling that we were in. So that generation of schooling didn't have a large amount of earth science content or in some places we did, but schools just sort of avoided it, did, weren't supported to do it. So, um, but a lot of those teachers have come to love it. So it's about supporting them. So Holly, I will get you to flick across the slide, please. I guess um, I pop the numbers up mostly to just say um, it's a, the more we can do, the better. So the more people we can enthuse, the more people we can encourage, the more people we can get in front of and engage, um, the bigger the impact. And I think sometimes uh, from my perspective, um, you know, we talk about, you know, one one program, one camp, one something is, is the fix all. And I think it is, as Phil mentioned, it is everything. It is all the opportunities, all of the different ways to access everything that everybody's doing in this space. Uh, collaboratively um, is going to go into encouraging 
students to think about geoscience as a potential career, but also, uh, you know, to enthuse and engage teachers. Obviously, if teachers are really interested in a subject, they're going to do a far better job of engaging and enthusing their students. Um, and then also, you know, most geologists you talk to, well, a lot of them actually will have a pinpoint in time um, where they went to something, heard someone speak, um, were part of something at school, out of school, that was their sort of, oh, I think I'd quite like to do this. Um, otherwise, you have the accidental geologists who sort of end up there after they've headed into uni for something else. But either way, it's usually because they've had an inspirational teacher, they've been to a cool event, they've done something interesting. So I guess, you know, my message or thought is, you know, the more things we can do, the better. Uh, I think the more things we can sort of coordinate together, learn from each other, um, leverage of each other, the better. And for everyone's I guess, reference. Um, one of the things that we do is actually produce curriculum resources. So we support teachers to teach in their classrooms, um, to feel empowered with the content, to have really easy hands-on activities that they can get in and excite their students with. Uh, and then we back that up by actually going in and running incursions, going into their classrooms and showing them how we engage students, um, you know, teaching the teachers, taking students out on field trips, um, basically just every single space we can see a barrier, uh, it's trying to sort of knock it down, build those relationships with teachers, um, enthuse them, engage them. And, you know, we've now got to the point, some of the teachers we've been working with for years are, um, you know, are training to be, you know, geologists in the background. I'm a little bit scared we're going to lose them to geology, to be honest. <laughs> Good teachers are hard to keep. So um, I'd prefer that didn't happen. Uh, but then I've also running across geologists that have volunteered for us in the past that are now training to be teachers. And that makes my heart super happy as well. So I guess my messaging is what can we do? Well, everything we're doing and more. Um, the more people engaged and enthused, the better. Ooh, I think that's my five. Thank you so much, Jo. Um... Keep up all the work you're doing. What you've, the impact you've had already is incredible. So thank you. Um, so now we're handing over to Richard Lilly, the Nexus Program Leader and uh, Minerals Industry Embedded Research Fellow at the University of Adelaide. So thank you so much, Richard. Well, thanks, Jess. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Yeah, look, um, I completely concur with everything Phil and Joe are saying. I mean, most people who try geology love it um and i guess from the tertiary perspective um you know students a lot of them come into geology if they've had any exposure to it we do obviously get people transferring over um after maybe done a, a, mod, a unit or two in the first year of their degrees um and if they fail chemistry and physics they normally jump in anyway um but you know but <laughs> that's to be encouraged anyway but it's more fun more sociable bit of drinking and all that um so uh look uni obviously it has suffered the last few years as a, a general um, two year, three year delay behind the mining industry booming. So currently we've been in good times for a couple of years. So numbers are recovering, but there was a lull um, over the last few years. Um, and of course, uni departments, universities are very cash strapped um, and they make business decisions based on how many students are in programs. So unfortunately, Australia has lost a couple of very good geology departments over the last few years because the uni's just said, well, not enough students will close you. So somewhere like Macquarie, world-class geology department gone, um, which limits the opportunities for students on the East Coast to study geology. Um, it, it's terribly frustrating. There's not too many positive stories coming out, coming out of the university education sector at the moment in a number of STEM disciplines. Um, the Nexus program, I guess what we try and do, and I guess, I guess my background is I'm an exploration geologist who's kind of works at a university doing industry focused research and I've sort of stumbled into education through I guess trying to fill that gap of what I know that industry wants people to know that you don't necessarily get as undergrads because there's so much to learn you know you've got a, only got three years to squeeze in a whole geology degree and there's just so much to do um, so we sort of run parallel with what unis do the primary uh, program that we run is a sort of two or three weeks in immersive summer school um, open to all students from around the country and obviously there's a few alumni um, in in the audience today um, and look it's it's been re really it's been a lot of fun um, we have been funded by the MCA since inception the last three years we've had Oz Minerals funding as well very grateful to those I'm you know struggling to find funding this year it's amazing Nexus is um, generally looked upon very positively as, as what we do but I don't have enough money to run the program this year at the moment 
I have promises of money, but taking, you know, as we all know, taking pledged money and turning that into something you can use um, might work on time scales that don't fit the, the particular person doing it. So it has certainly been challenging. And, and, and I'll be honest, it's been very frustrating. You know, all feedback I get on the program is incredibly positive. And yet when you ask people for money, they sort of look in another direction. It, it's crazy for an industry worth hundreds of billions of dollars. And for the last three years, we've been having these, at least three years, we've been having these conversations about declining student numbers, growing skills gap, and yet a proven entity, much like Joe and much like Phil, we have the infrastructure to do this. It's been there for ages, but we're relying on teachers taking time out of their holidays to learn about geology so they can teach it. It's nonsense. We should be paying these teachers bonuses, but then people wouldn't like that, you know. Um, but, but we should be, really. There should be a pot of money made available by industry to fund these existing things but what i'm finding is so many companies i'm not going to mention any in particular have their internal you know how do we communicate geoscience how do we do it and i get the feeling they think they can do it a bit better and we're talking i'm talking about professional societies as well there's very wealthy societies in geoscience that have big pots of money um, but do a lot of the stuff independently, but they also fund things like Oz Earth Ed, um, TSEP. We also can't forget about CORE over in WA and expanding nationally. Obviously, Susie Urbanak is doing fantastic work for the last 15 years as Geoscience Pathways Project here in South Australia. Uh, so there's the infrastructure there, but we need consistent funding. I've spent months this year already just trying to keep the program going. And, you know, I, I, I don't particularly like rattling a tin. I'm obviously not a proper academic because I'm not very good at asking people for money. But it's, you know, it's uh, it, it's crazy. We sit in this have, and we've been having these conversations for years and the same outcomes. We need more STEM in schools. We need more STEM at, in the curriculum level. And that's where I kind of cut out because there's nothing I can do to influence that. I can't impact on curriculum decisions per state or per Per national. I think the geophysicists will say they're also incredibly worried about the standard of maths falling down every year in our curriculum nationally. So there's there's bigger picture stuff than just geoscience. It's all STEM. And as we all know, anyone who is exposed to geoscience gets to do a field trip. We like geology. It's awesome. So um, kids who do geoscience often fall in love with it. And I, I totally agree with uh, Joe's comment about most people have got that, that moment where they sort of flicked over and were like turned on to geoscience. And we see that every year at the uni with students who may not have been exposed to it. So we just need, look, fundamentally, I, I think that we need consistent funding and um, we need to get more geoscience and STEM in schools. And we have the facility to do that, but we don't have the consistent funding. That's a big hold up. So I'll just leave it there before I get even more ranty. So I'll just, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. I can only imagine how frustrating, you know, your roles can be at times trying to raise the money when you've got such incredible, yeah, it's all built, like you said, it's already there. So it's um, it's a shame that you have the same frustration all the time. Mm -hmm. But no, thank you for sharing that with us. And, um, but yeah, thank you so much, Richard. I always uh, love your passion. So thank you. Um, so now on to the storyteller, Holly Cook. So Holly is currently doing her honours degree have you started yes yeah, amazing. Three weeks in. amazing um so yes and also working with um oz minerals and as our gen z for this panel it's <laughs> going to be wonderful hearing her perspective so thank you so much holly cool all right now my time to, to be screen sharing cool so hey everyone i'm holly uh, i'm chatting to you from ghana land in adelaide south australia Quickly, if we haven't met before, I've just finished my Bachelor of Science Advanced in Geology at Uni Adelaide. I've been working part-time with Think and Act Differently at Oz Minerals for the past year, and I've just started an honours um, project with the Sustainable Minerals Institute, Uni Queensland, Uni Adelaide, and Oz Minerals looking at critical minerals and mine waste, which is, I'm stoked about it. I can't wait to do it. Um, and then in spare time, I spend as much time as possible um, really storytelling and sharing earth science with our young South Australians. Richard has been an awesome help for me over the last couple of years, you, you, helping me with his own small pool of money with Nexus doing videos and outreach. So these circles all overlap. So it's really cool to see everyone in the same room. So now dare I say it, as a young person in the room, I don't actually want to claim to represent the entire spectrum of perspective and opinion among young adults and graduates. I'm one checkpoint. I know who I am. I know what resonates with my audiences, but not just one of us here has a complete picture uh, in our own right. So for me, geoscience is all in tone of our stories and sharing curiosity. 
Everything else like jobs and grads, that actually comes later, that's secondary. The geological story is a perspective. It's a journey. It's not a means to an end for filling jobs to get more or out the ground quicker. And that's, it sounds like an intense thing to say, but earth science for me frames humankind's entire existence on this earth. And anything short of that message is barely a quick fix. And that sounds really intense. So what I'm going to do is, is show you my why, show you why I think like that. So our ongoing dependency on, the, on, on this earth isn't just a feature of, of our lives. Our earth dependency entirely constitutes our existence. The sand in our cement, phosphorus in our fertilizer, the indium in our digital screens, we actually owe it all to the vibrant chemical constituency of nature. And this is knowledge that geology uniquely provides, yet is terrible at communicating. And this is a shame because geoscience in its, at its core is actually the interface between human and planet. And it's the misunderstood backdrop to the most complex challenges of our times with climate crises and pushes for energy transitions. These are actually revolutions in earth and social stewardship around the world, across industries. And this 21st century global backdrop that shapes a lot of how I think, and I'm, I don't know if I'm a Gen Z, but I'll, I'll, I, my reference frame is my 17 year old sister and that's how she thinks. And geo is this misunderstood backdrop um, to the most complex challenges of our time. So, <laughs> But people have different experiences of this planet, don't they? Exploration and mining geos know the earth for her raw materials and we're stupefied by the mineral demands of a clean, of clean energy systems. But Gen Z knows the earth as suffocating under greenhouse gases and catastrophic flooding and black bushfire seasons. And both geo experiences are valid and they're legitimate. Yet these two ex different experiences cannot and will not talk to each other. And building the bridge between the two isn't actually a technical task. It's a human one. So in, in my eyes, when I think, well, what's most human about geology? Where's the common ground? For me, it's actually quite basic. It's wonder. We know the wonder of deep time and the slow dance of tectonic plates. We know the greens of malachite and the curves of an ancient crossbed. Earth science has changed how all of us view the world in this room and how we interact with the planet. And this perspective, put simply, it's, it's beautiful. And it's entirely non-technical. It's entirely universal. And connection to the earth is globally common ground for all people everywhere. Yet I rarely see this earth science outreach done justice um, in, in many kinds of industry outreach or in public commentary about the green future. So if I were feeling brave, I would say that it, it can feel like the geologist has lost their voice. And this, I think Phil was saying this earlier and it resonated, Many industries rely on our discipline. Geoscience is quite diffused across many different industries. Um, and when the geologist is quiet, our story is told by others. And if I'm feeling brave, I would also say that our loudest, most publicly noticed voice is the mining industry. And unfortunately, this voice doesn't often put the strongest geoscience story forward. Mining doesn't do a great job at showcasing the earth story behind the resource. And you know we all get the exponential role of mining in a clean future. I work in mining. We pat ourselves a lot on the back about being the underdog of the decarbonized world. And we, we try to stay relevant to young people by, you know, this is the message we put out on social medias and articles. We remind the world of their material lives. And yeah, it's a true message, but it's not resonating. And while the sheer quantity of raw material the world uses is compelling, when it's, when it's said with the wrong tone, it can be depressing, it doesn't really inspire, and it doesn't connect us to anyone that far outside our own echo chamber, especially young people. Almost have to come down to their level. So somewhere in the last few decades, I feel like poetry and beauty dropped out of the geological dictionary. I think expressing curiosity to the public became less important than expressing some kind of value to the market, and geology became synonymous with awe, became synonymous with exploiting the earth. And after decades of persistent pushing of planetary tipping points, digging up the earth doesn't feel like where the future is built for young people and for graduating scientists, myself, a graduating scientist. But it's a tragedy, isn't it? Because as geologists, our, special, our specialty is that ground. It is the ground beneath our feet. I feel like sometimes geologists can be so enamored by science, by data, by our technical craft, that we forget to bridge connection from planet to people. And this, is, this disconnect in its many different forms is what we're all feeling and talking about today. So my advice is less tangible. It's a bit more a book bashing, a philosophical rant, is that a very powerful force for good is the geologist speaking their truth. 
Injecting a bit of beauty, a bit of curiosity and earth stewardship into our language as we face the outside world and tell the story behind the ore. I think that geoscience explicitly empowers the widest catchment of all because geoscience at its heart is actually just falling in love with the natural world. And our earth science perspective means knowing place and time, it's locating ourselves and others in the richness of earth's ancient history and feeling connected to landscapes long gone. So assuming I'm talking to a room full of geologists who work in some capacity, this isn't the most poetic or inspiring way to finish off my talk, but it's my most critical takeaway. Um, so just to, just to say it again, get the earth science perspective out, get the curiosity out and careers actually follow, jobs in industry follow, because young adults follow their hearts, they follow a sense of purpose and they, they make value judgments and they follow stewardship. And filling positions is the consequence and it shouldn't be the catalyst for knowing geoscience. That it, it's secondary. What has to come first is curiosity and a sense of stewardship. So that's where I'll jump off, Jess. Thank you so much. You always inspire me. I just love hearing from you. So thank you for that. You do a wonderful job with storytelling. So thank you. Um, so We've got one last wonderful speaker, uh, Ned Howard, the manager of geoscience at Evolution Mining. So thank you so much, Ned. Thanks very much, Jess. Um, hard act to follow, Holly. <laughs> uh, I, I completely agree with you though. Hey, thanks very much, Jess and Holly. Um, yeah, so I just uh, wanted to give a few kind of perspectives on, you know, from from the industry on on current graduates and talk a little bit about, you know, the the university uh, kind of kind of end of things. So, you know, what, um, you know, I completely agree with what you know Holly said and what everyone said that um, geology comes first and that. Um, you know what we're and that you know geology is is a whole lot more than than just the industry but it is also you know mining mining is a really important part of of the solution and a key part of what we need to do is to is to focus on on talking about that in that context um but to talk a little bit about uh perspectives on on current graduates you know the the things that industry is looking for are, are passionate scientists people who who love that who have exactly what holly's talking about um, you know, um, people who can who can think critically, but are but are really driven by that that knowledge uh, and that love um, for understanding the world around them. Um, good foundational core skills and and honours are, are really great, um, and industry related subjects and back works are really a bonus. But it but it comes back to those those core skills and and being passionate scientists. It's really the state of things in the industry at the moment for, for a perspective from people is that, you know, I don't think we're, we're graduating quite the number of geologists we want to in Australia. Um, particularly when you talk about that people who, who are really keen and motivated and have that passion, uh, it's, it's, it is hard to find them. Um, and that's from talking through uh, a number of different companies and also from the recent surveys undertaken by the, the National um, Graduate Group um, at the AIG as well. Do you want to keep going? Yeah. Yeah, and so I completely agree with what everyone said uh, around, um, you know, getting that, that love uh, and fascination with with the geosciences and understanding the importance of that to the entirety of society is is a key thing thing you know right from from kids through to university level, but I think one of the things we need to keep in perspectives around um, you know what what we need to do to get those those skills and those those graduates out there into the industry is is around that GSI the university end um, of the spectrum. So at the moment, that's the thing that's probably the the most um, under threat is our our teaching capacity for geoscience at the university level. Um, particularly with COVID, there's been a lot of rationalisation of of courses around the place that Richard's touched on before. We've lost a couple of schools, particularly you know Macquarie um, was a huge one. There's also some really important specialist skills that are, are really important to the industry, but also, you know, um, things like understanding geoscience hazards, 
exploration 2.0 and the kind of thing that that Holly's looking at doing there with with geophysics, which is a key tool there, uh, and that's really you know on the precipice at the moment. Um, with low student numbers, it's been kind of um, you know easy fodder, I guess, to 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 rationalise costs at, at universities. Um, yeah, uh, next one. So, you know, what can we do overall? I think spreading the word on geoscience, as everyone said before, is, is the number one thing. We need to do that with people right from a young age through to people who are entering uni and also into, into first year uni as well. There's some really critical decisions that get made around the, the careers that, that people are gonna have once they get to university. I think the, the concept of the accidental geologist is, is a good one, but I think probably 90% of geologists are accidental geologists. They're people who've stumbled into it, had some interaction or, or discovered geology, you know, often in the first year of university. Um, and they had no idea how fascinating it could be. They had no idea of the diversity of careers and lifestyles and things they could do and other specialisations and aspects of STEM that they could combine it with in, in a really practical way. So to me, the, you know, the biggest message there is, you know, all through that is to communicate both the importance, but also, you know, the, the diversity of, of the aspects of geoscience and the careers that you can have in it. Um, and and talking about the why instead of the what of of what we're doing. Um, and Peter Betts has a, a you know a great example there if if people watch his earlier Geo Hug talk. Um, in terms of um, affecting the decisions at at the kind of the kind of university end and getting more graduates going through and doing um, those geology degrees. Uh, I think, you know, understanding what's driving students' decisions is, is really important. Uh, and the Australian Geoscience Council is looking at doing a survey on that at the moment. Um, the other thing there as well is that I, I think we need to realise, you know, industry needs to be much more part of the solution. Um, we need to be more active in it. Um, we also need collaborative, coordinated effort across different organisations. You know, there's a lot of kind of little things happening all around the place. Uh, to help in various parts of that kind of decision from early childhood through to being um, being an actual geologist. But we need to have coordinated collaborative effort between industry, between representative groups, government uh, and educational institutions to try and, um, and solve those issues. And I think, you know, sometimes we, we can end up in a bit of, a, you know, finger pointing at um, you know, expectations of, 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 you know, the graduates coming through today uh, or at universities. Um, but I think I, I don't find that particularly helpful. I think we need to kind of work together, represent this is the, the societal and um, regulatory administrative environment that we're working in and how can we do the best we can within that context together. We go on to the next one, Holly. Yeah, so I guess just to touch on again, you know, what the industry can do. Um, I think, I mean, you know, I and, and a number of my colleagues, you know, when we go to universities around the place, we go and um, talk, you know, about our grad program uh, and things like that. But, but we always try and get in and talk to um, first year students as well, because that's a critical decision uh, in people considering, you know, earth science. A lot of people who do um, first year geology um, are kind of on the fence and not sure what they're going to do next year. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to, um, to talk about how great geology can be, the diversity of careers and lifestyles you can have in it, how it's important and, and how it can be a fascinating career. So I think, you know, doing things like that and, you know, when we do that, it's amazing the, the number of really passionate young people there are out there it's just like it's 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 so fun because you just get all this en great energy back um, from the people you you're talking to um, but we need to do more of it um, you know the the thing you hear from those people regularly is is that you know they want to know more about what it's like to actually be a geologist to understand those opportunities and to hear from people who are working in the, in those roles 
So I think, you know, just getting out, you know, just doing those kind of incursions, I've found, you know, universities are generally really open to it and really happy to have, you know, people who are working as geologists, whatever their, whatever their, their role, you know, to come in and talk to students about that. It only needs to be 10 minutes and, you know, you could, you could change, you know, someone's life and career in that amount of time. Um, advocacy, I think, is something that Holly's talked about that I think as, as geologists and also as industry, we need to be to be better at. Uh, and and as Richard said, the funding. Without expectation that we're necessarily going to get a direct benefit back. That's me. Thank you so much, Ned. Thank you to all of you. It's yeah, it's been amazing to hear from you. So I can't thank you enough for getting involved. Thank <laughs> you.